Uh, what is your name and what's your occupation? My name is Jennifer Nelson and I'm a student at the University of Oklahoma in the Religious Studies Department. Mm -hmm. What was your first impression about Turkish people and Turkey before you met IIB volunteers? Um, I believe that I didn't have a particular image in my mind. I think I probably went along with a lot of stereotypes that a lot of Americans have um, of of the nations over in the Middle Eastern area. I, I was really surprised when I went to Turkey and met the people to see how genuinely kind they were and to see a, a split between Western Turkey and Eastern Turkey and the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. Have you ever hesitated to go to Turkey uh, and uh, have you had any reaction from your friends or family members warning you about going to Turkey? A few people uh, prior to me going on the trip questioned why obviously mm -hmm. I was going to Turkey in the first place and once I explained to them that we were going to study this movement called the mm -hmm. Gulen movement um, I of course had to explain that <laughs> to them <laughs> um, they were a little concerned simply because the knowledge is not out there about Turkey, so okay. people were a little bit concerned about me going over there. What are the, what are the major concerns that they had? I think geography is one. Okay. Um, they realize that it's so close to the Syrian border and mm -hmm. Iraqi border areas, and obviously there's a war going on right now. Mm -hmm. I think another misconception is that because it is an Islamic country, they're not going to be friendly to Westerners or to people of other faith traditions. So there was just a lot of um, misconceptions with, with not having any knowledge about the area at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, stri what struck you the most in Turkey? You know, I, I think probably the one thing that struck me the most was how diligent in prayer people were. Um, and of course it was so obvious to see when you have the call to prayer, which I thought it was quite beautiful mm -hmm. and that was always nice to wake up to but I think what struck me the most was that people would stop during the middle of the day whatever they were doing and take the time to pray and meditate and, and that was really an amazing thing to me. And what did you feel when you first heard the call to prayer? Um, I think I felt a sense of serenity and beyond that I felt like it wasn't just speaking to those of the Islamic faith. Mm -hmm. I felt like with my faith tradition um, it spoke to me as well. I couldn't understand the words but it was just a certain beauty that I knew it was time to sit down and meditate and, and think on God. And what did you feel when you saw people praying in mosques and leaving their jobs to do their prayers in mosques? Um, again, I think the sense of reverence that they had was what just um, flabbergasted me mm -hmm. that they would take the time out to go do that. And it was very meaningful for me as well because it made me stop and take the time and reflect during those moments as well. And of course I, I really enjoyed being able to go into the mosque as a guest and to see the way that um, Muslims pray. I think that was really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. The experience that you have in Turkey uh, help you to help you reevaluate yourself, like to become a better Christian, or better to consider yourself, like to certain things more in your own faith. I think it did um, cause me to reevaluate on twofold. Um, the first thing is it gave me a, a reconception of what the Muslim people are like, and I know obviously you can't categorically say mm -hmm. that all are the mm -hmm. same. But it gave me a broader scope to know that the media has given so many misconceptions about how Islamic people live and um, how their re religion plays into their life. And I think secondary to that, um, it, it just, I always had the belief prior to that that it didn't matter what faith tradition you practiced, as long as you had faith in something, that was important. Mm -hmm. And I think I could see that the people in Turkey live just like I do, in a sense. They get up, they go to work, they go to school, they love their families, their children, their friends, and they're no different than I am, just because they follow a different tradition, listen to a different prophet, um, I see no difference. And so I felt much closer to the people in that sense. Mm -hmm. And um, how your impression about Turkey and Turkish people has changed after the trip in, your, in, in Turkey? Well, first of all, I have friends now <laughs> from that area, and um, I feel like I feel like I have new friends that are so meaningful to me because they're they're willing to share their culture with me, and I think that's something that needs to take place more, not only for interfaith dialogue to happen, but I think if people would just take the time out 
to learn and befriend people from other countries. Mm -hmm. It would solve so many problems simply because they would see what I saw, that you are the same type of person that I am. So um, the trip to Turkey was absolutely wonderful to me, and I can't wait to go back. Mm -hmm. Did the trip reinforce your hopes about establishing peace in the world? It did reestablish my hopes, mm -hmm. because I see that there's actually something that's working through the Gulen movement. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, prior to my trip to Turkey, I had never heard of Gulen, and I had never heard of the type of movement with his education that he's trying to do. And I, I would have to say that um, I'm pretty much an idealist anyway, mm -hmm. and I always want things to work, but it seems that in this day and age, it's so difficult to find movements and activities and things that actually do work. So that was impressive, to go to Turkey and to visit the schools and to see that this structure that Gulen and his people have set up is, is working. What are things that you are, could you elaborate this topic a little bit more? Well, I think primarily the thing that struck me the most is that what Gulen has been able to do in his schools is he's been able to take these children and give them ideals and ethics and good behavior and he's training these children to become good citizens. Yet he's not pressing down a particular religious dogma on them. And it seems that, especially in America today, it's so difficult to separate the two because if children get a, an education that teaches those types of things, sometimes it is in a religious school and the dogma and the theology go along with that. Um, so I don't think I've ever seen a structure where they've separated the two. And the kids were just so happy. We saw all of their awards, so we know that they're doing well in their education. Mm -hmm. It was very impressive. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there is a need for such an education system in the U.S. as well? Oh, absolutely. I, I think we have something to learn from the Gulen movement in America. Um, right now, America, I think, is not only in a critical situation in our educational systems, but we are looked upon by many countries of the world as having a leadership role in the world. And I think we, we, we owe people to live up to that. And I think if we're going to produce future generations of children, who are willing to learn and who are willing to have interfaith dialogue with other children and intercultural exchanges, we need a formula like the Gulen movement. So I really pray and I really hope that we can get something like that going over here. I see. Mm -hmm. And um, model proposed by Gulen would be could be successful, especially uh, would help for a better future for our children. Oh, absolutely, I do. I think probably the biggest challenge in getting that model set in America mm -hmm. is to explain people what it's about. Because I think right now the concept is so difficult for them to grasp. Because in the United States, we are such a secular nation when it comes to our public education that you either go to a secular public school or you pay, pay for a private institution. And generally, private institutions are religious affiliation. Um, such as Catholic, Episcopal, etc. So I think once you can get people to grasp the concept of what the schools are, I think it would go over famously. I think it would be really good for us to do.